For Those Who Are Politically Wise, a show about the lives of Christians in Ohio involved with politics. Introducing your host, Reverend Thomas Wise. Greetings, my fellow patriots, saints, and sinners. The show is titled Politically Wise, and I am your host, Reverend Thomas Wise. At the end of the show, there will be a blessing. Don't miss it. But first, a word from our sponsor. Do you pray for a politician? Do you think a politician can be a Christian? Do you think politicians should stand up for Christian principles? Do you think politicians should pray together? Do you want to see more Christians in politics? If you said yes to any of these questions, then you may be politically wise. Subscribe to Politically Wise on Facebook or on YouTube. Thank you. The opinions and statements on this show belong to those who give them. The rest of the show belongs to Thomas Wise Words, all rights reserved. Thank you for listening today. If you want to email me, you may do so at politically.wise at gmail.com. Hello, my listeners. This is Reverend Thomas Wise, and I have a very special guest today. My, my representative who has to put up with me at the state house when he sees me. No, he's been very kind and very gracious to me. And I am honored to have you on my show today for my listeners. Sir, would you please introduce yourself? Well, thank you so much, Reverend Wise, for having me on. It's Jeff Rezebeck. I am the uh, 43rd District State Representative. And again, that's the uh, northwest uh, corner of Montgomery County down into Farmersville and all of Preble County. Big area. Yes, it is. Uh, we're just getting done uh, with some fair seasons. We had, uh, the, of course, the Preble County Fair, and uh, just this past uh, week so, and weekend, uh, we finished up the Montgomery County Fair. So the last time you were on the show, you were running for office, and then by God's blessing on you, uh, you you won won the seat uh, fairly fairly handily, didn't you? Uh, yeah, yes, we did. Yes, we did. We did a good job. We um, uh, worked extremely hard. We listened. Uh, I think that was the the best thing that we did during the campaign is we continued to listen uh, to all of the voters out there and all of the. Uh, and again, the area is extremely diverse, so we listened to all the different points of view. And, uh, you know, being open and honest with everybody, uh, they uh, saw fit to give me an opportunity to represent uh, the district uh, up in Columbus, and, and, and I think we're doing okay. What do you like about being an elected official? Because you, this is the first time you've held elected office. Uh, yes, it's, it is the first time I, I've held elected office, and it was a, a tremendous honor by being elected. In fact, um, you came out to the ceremonial swearing in uh, that we had in Preble County, and we were out at the Preble County Historical uh, District and uh, one of their historical little homes that they have out there. And uh, it was what was uh, wonderful about that event, uh, and you were a part of it, was just the tremendous turnout. We, we, I really don't think we could have fit another person uh, in that in that in that setting, and it, and it demonstrated uh, how excited people were for a new uh, face, a new voice, uh, common sense, uh, with I think a, a strong moral background uh, to go up to Columbus and say, you know, what people are thinking, and, and that we are going to do what we think is you know right, and what we uh, making sure that we listen to everybody. And, and make sure that the uh, Columbus starts listening to us back at home, mm-hmm. and that's what I've I've tried to do. Um, not always done exactly what uh, you know, and, and as I learn up there uh, about leadership and uh, what they ask you to do, and and sometimes it was not what our district, uh, what I thought our district needed, and what I heard from our constituents in our district, and and they understood that and they listened, and and, and the good thing about being up there is the leadership. Uh, uh, in Columbus, uh, especially in the House, uh, they have a strong uh, faith and moral background that they listen to the representatives who are listening to the people. And I, and I really enjoy that. That was one of the, the big things that I had a concern about, uh, being new, uh, not knowing uh, the whole operation up there. Uh, but, but this leadership team uh, has involved me uh, in, in a lot of things to make sure that uh, my voice is being heard and making sure uh, we're doing the right thing for the people in the 43rd. What I really enjoy uh, about going up to Columbus um, and doing uh, is just solving problems for individual people. 
uh, you know, I enjoy the doing the background on getting legislation through, and we've been able to accomplish that. We'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, I just it, it, the fun, the, the the best thing, and the fun thing for me is uh, my legislative aide and Kevin and I, Kevin and I uh, solving constituent problems. And I'll just there's a quick example. We had a gentleman. Ke- I, Kevin uh, was so excited uh, the other day that we were able to resolve this problem. This uh, gentleman who uh, is in, in his late 80s, um, had lost contact with his son who is in, in the mental health uh, uh, hospitals in the state. Um, and just because I think of his health and uh, his son's health, they've lost contact and he couldn't find him. Because of my background uh, in the court system, we were able to kind of use that and locate him. Uh, and we, we res- kind of got a connection. And uh, Kevin called me and indicated that it was one of the best days because uh, the father and the son got to talk for the first time in about a year, year and a half, mm. and so it was really good that we, you know, and those are the, those are the good things. Those are the simple things that we can do uh, for everybody. That if there's a problem, we, you know, we'll get you. We'll try and get you the answer. Uh, and 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 those are the good days that we have, and we, we've had a lot of those good days. So it's it's, it's a lot of fun. Big time commitment. Yes, yes. Uh, they they still claim it's a part time job, but. Uh, it, it is uh, it is uh, uh, full time in the sense of you know we are in Columbus only part time and I and I understand that but uh, in responding to everybody in the district like I want to and I think the district deserves uh, it is a full time but we have fun on that on those full time uh, being at the fair uh, both fairs uh, working with the the kids in the 4-H programs and the people that are operating the fairs and the exciting things that happen especially here in Montgomery County. Uh, we are looking forward to, uh, we're still crossing our fingers and making sure uh, everything happens, but the Montgomery County Fair may be moving or will be moving uh, up into the Brookville area. Uh, not uh, next year, but if everything goes right, the 2017. They have one more year at the downtown um, the location, and uh, that location will be developed into an economic force itself, and we'll be able to get the Montgomery County Fair uh, running great and, 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 and doing good things out in Brookville. You get to milk a cow? Uh, no, I, I did not. We uh, we got to move some of the animals around, help the kids move some animals around. And um, I, I think those kids, they know how to move the animals around. When we when we get involved in all that, sometimes the animals move us around. So it, it's a fun time, especially at, at both uh, both fairgrounds, um, seeing uh, the kids work on their projects all year, display them uh uh, it is an exciting time for them. For and it's a proud time for their parents to show what the kids have accomplished over a year. And uh, it's a little uh, a little sadder <laughs> on uh, when the livestock go to sale because uh, a lot of times that's the last time the kids will have contact with the animal that they've raised over the last year. Uh, but it's a good time because then they earn scholarship money for themselves and uh, they, they they get geared up for next year. You're up in Columbus, so what's uh? It's been there a year now. You know where all the bathrooms are at. <laughs> yes, we're learning. Uh, so uh, what else is uh, you've learned, and uh, what else, anything you particularly are proud that you've accomplished? Well, the first thing is, and, and again, what we did, and I, and I think that some counsel from you as well as some other uh, veteran uh, individuals from uh, the going up to Columbus is one of the first things we did is we made sure we listened. Um, uh, I know uh, as, a, as a leader in the community, you want to get your ideas out there and make sure uh, that, uh, that our position is known. But uh, I think one of, the, one of the good things that we were able to accomplish is that we, we listened to a lot of different things that were going on in the community uh, and, and, and did at the appropriate times bring them up in, in Columbus. And we were able to, uh, we joined on with um, Representative Sprague from uh, up in Finley area up north of us. Uh, he had asked me to become involved in the bill with uh, what uh, most people know as Narcan. We'll call it naloxone. It is a, an abil- it is a drug that um, really has no side effects. Uh, what it does is it helps save uh, somebody that has overdosed on opiates, uh, basically an overdose on heroin. Uh, this drug, if given to them uh, when they're in the middle of that overdose, uh, will bring them back to life. It basically stops the overdose and eliminates the heroin. Um, and we were able to, they had begun a normal uh, a process up in Columbus of trying to get this drug out. It originally was going out to first responders with uh, Representative Sprague and my, and, and my bill, uh, which is House Bill 4. Um, we wanted to give it to act, have that access to family members, close friends of somebody that you may know 
uh, who is using drugs so that you can have it available and save that life. Um, and we were able to uh, work it through, and that was a great thing of learning the process of getting it through the House uh, committees and how on the House floor as well as then going over to present it in the, the Senate and then coming back. Uh, we had this one little change, came back to the House, we got it through. We were, I think we have the highest vote count, and, it, and that really doesn't mean anything. It just kind of shows that you've worked the bill really well and that everyone thought it was a, a wonderful and great idea because uh, we had it 98 to nothing uh, vote uh, on it. Mm. So we were extremely proud and, uh, and, you know, and with Representative Sprague, who uh, is a wonderful individual uh, who helped me go through and learn the process, uh, that bill became law. Um, the governor signed it in the early part of July, and we are saving lives on a daily basis uh, with this heroin epidemic that's gone throughout uh, our state, and particularly in our area. It, it is just tremendous, and we are making a difference. You not only hear that from family members, from first responders, but I've received a few uh, letters uh, from individuals that have been saved themselves, and they're on the road to recovery. And, and this is not a this is not an automatic fix. It's to give them an opportunity to live and give them an opportunity to change their their ways and and, and do better in life. So we're really proud of that. We've got some other uh, bills that are out there that are in the middle of the process. And again, it's just uh, stuff that we think is important uh, with regards to uh, helping our community, especially on the drug issue, not have access uh, to uh, some of the just simple stuff of, you know, just IDing so that the kids uh, don't get access to abusing cough syrup and cough medicine. Just having an ID, an ID that says you're over 18 that you can get that. That's one of the bills that we're working on. I think we'll be successful on that. It's been received well, and one of the things that we've done is we've also involved everybody. The one lesson that we learned up there uh, from somebody else that didn't do it correctly is if you don't involve everybody in the conversation, you, it, you'll have a rough time getting any bills or any ideas through. And so we want to involve everybody, and we've done that, and I think we've got a good reputation up there. So we're, we're doing well. Have a law practice? Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> we are, uh, we, uh, that t- early on took, took, uh, we, I, I stepped out of that for just a, uh, a couple of weeks in a sense to get settled up there, but we've been continuing to do that. I, again, still work. Uh, I do a lot of uh, criminal defense, but most people know me in the juvenile court area. Uh, and so we're still trying to help a bunch of kids and uh, families uh, get through the system and make sure that they have uh, a good life ahead of them. Linda asked you a question about your faith the last time you said you were a practicing Catholic. Yes, I am. In fact, uh, we did, uh, we had a, we had a, I'm trying to remember the date now. I, uh, I think it was, uh, I, I, and I, I, I'll share this with you as well. I think we were going to talk about it. I was on a mission with the University of Dayton School of Law. We went down to Ecuador, but when I got back, uh, the chapel uh, was where normally I, I, I go to mass on campus. Uh, the chapel was redone and it was, uh, they had an opening and, uh, re-blessing of the chapel itself. Um, and it was, it, the, it's spectacular. Uh, I, I think it's it, it's very humble. I think that's part of a Marinist tradition. Uh, but it is a beautiful. Uh, uh, it was beautiful before. It's even more beautiful now. Uh, the stained glass, um, and uh, so I think that that's done well. We did a, we did do a mission down in uh, Ecuador, kind of a connection with the Marinists. Uh, we went down and uh, with Brother Giovanni, uh, who is in Ecuador. He's Italian, but he's been in Ecuador for over some 30 odd years, uh, helping out, uh, several of the school systems down there or the school, individual schools. Uh, and we went out, we went to two different schools, uh, interacted with the kids, saw what they needed, as well as, uh, uh focusing on the environment. Uh, he has a, a big connection to the environment. We were able to, well, uh, I, I think our, 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 our faith and all that was challenged a little bit. We had a, uh, a day or two days uh, living actually in the jungle uh, up in the up in the mountains we had to walk two and a half uh, miles up uh, almost to uh, elevation of 10,000 feet and uh, with the law students and uh, Judge Huffman who also attended with us as our leader uh, it was it, it, uh, it tested our faith to get up to the uh, top of that mountain uh, and see the what's called the cloud forest and that's basically an area where you actually are above the clouds uh, and the forest there is being devastated and the number of species uh, that they're trying to record uh, is, is, is where 
uh, Brother Giovanni has his passion as well, and he just wanted us to experience uh, what it was like uh, not only um, uh, in the environment in the sense of living in the jungle, but also going to the different schools in the cities and meeting the uh, indigenous people of Ecuador. Uh, and it, his, his idea, a lot of times when you go out on a mission, um, it is to do a lot of work um, while you're there, and and that's true. That's a that's a good that's a good uh, uh, component to it. But Brother Giovanni also explained that 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 at this particular mission was much more than that. This particular mission was it, it's not just at the end of the day you pat yourself on the back and you you say we did a good job and helped individuals while while in the country, and that was a good experience. But his his goal on on our uh, mission was to make sure we come back and we acknowledge and we explain what happened and what we did and what the issues in Ecuador are. Uh, his uh, big thing is about education uh, and uh, helping uh, the rural population just have some education. The one class we went to um, for the day uh, was about uh, they have kids anywhere from 5 to the oldest one was 13, and they had math that day, and each of the kids probably got maybe 20 minutes uh, each of the grade levels maybe got 20 minutes of math because we have one teacher trying to serve kind of six different groups and different levels of education and math. And then the rest of the day, of course, uh, is uh, dedicated to uh, them meeting their basic needs. Um, and the the one story, uh, side story, is that the, the kids that who believe that education is important, they walk two hours to school in the morning and walk two hours back to their family farm. So they see the need, but we've got to help out a little bit. They're running out of paper and pencils and, you know, just things that we take as basic. Uh, and uh, Brother Giovanni wanted to go, uh, have us go back and express uh, the need that the children of Ecuador have and, and that they can do great things down there if they just get a little help. And if one of my listeners hear, hears this show and says, how can I help, what would you recommend? There are there's different ways. Uh, it's specifically with Brother Giovanni and our Ecuador mission is to contact. Uh, you can t- contact me directly or uh, Judge Huffman through the University of Dayton School of Law. Uh, you can contact me, and I just my email is real simple. It's just J, the letter J, and then R E Z A B E K. That's J Rezebeck at AOL dot com. And if you were to give me that, uh, you reach out and contact me, I can provide you all the information or the law school itself, uh, Dayton at edu, and uh, I think the law school, or just call the law school directly, they'll be able to get you that information. And it's just simple stuff for them. And they need pencils and papers and, and scissors and things that a lot of people are sending their kids back to school, and they've had to go out and buy all those so those supplies and just think, if you don't have those supplies, but you you know they're fundamental to having an education. Absolutely. In fact, that's what we a lot of us did was we we stuffed our suitcases and that uh, trying to fill of uh, a bunch of stuff uh, for the for the children that we were going to be we were going to meet in that. And it was and it was a good time. They're very appreciative of anything that that's given. In fact, and there's other things. Uh, Brother Giovanni lists a, a number of children that you can help sponsor, and it's you know just simple stuff of twelve dollars a month or. 30 bucks uh, for the year to get them to school or make sure that the supplies that they have down there. And, and just something as simple as that. Um, uh, 30, bucks, if, 30 yeah. bucks for school supplies for a kid for a year. Yep. And it's, and because it, it's very, uh, it, as we were down there, it, it, it's, uh, they use, they do use the U.S. dollar, but it's, uh, it was fairly inexpensive in the community. And, you know, just, and there are some simple things, shoes and stuff like that, that we kind of, Almost take for granted they, they 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 truly do need in the rural rural areas, and they can make a difference. And that's I think that was uh, the blessing that Brother Giovanni uh, was trying to portray to us is that you know when, when you see something like that in the world, there's kids and these and, and and these adults understand the need for that education. And they're just trying to do everything uh, they can to get it for their children, and and they do give up a lot, and especially and as I talked about those two children uh, that walk two hours. Uh, to and from school, those parents are giving up a lot in the daytime uh, because that's, you know, with a rural farm and all that, that's four hours out of a day that that child would be helping out in the form and the farm because uh, they're two boys, they're older, they're getting older, but they're, uh, the oldest one is 13, the other one I believe he's 11 or 10, 
but you know they become very useful on a farm uh, as they get older, and, uh, and and so that's why sometimes their education. You heard me say that the, that the age of thirteen was the oldest in in school, and that's because they become uh, as part of the family and the economic unit in the family, they become a bit more valuable. And if we can give them more education, get the teacher more time at the school with each of those kids, they can uh, move on uh, and, 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 and move on in their community and, and become a very productive citizen down there. And it's a great country. I, I, it was it's spectacularly beautiful, and everyone was, was wonderful to us. Um, even the indigenous people were uh, welcoming and, uh, although protective of their lands, uh, we're, uh, very, very, uh, enthusiastic about us making sure we learned about their culture and the reasons of, of, of why they do certain things and, uh, and, and they were very involved. It, it was, it was a wonderful trip. So did you just spend some time in, in Quito or were you out of Quito or were you on down or more on the, on the coast? No, uh, we spent, uh, our, our main base was in Quito. Uh, then of course we were, uh, and we kind of basically throughout the two weeks that we were there went throughout n- n- numerous communities, but basing out ourselves out of Quito, staying within the Andes. We did not go to the coast and all that. And of course, uh, uh, we could not go north in the country, um, because of security reasons and that. So, uh, we just stayed in there and, uh, uh, we, we did a lot of we did a lot of good things. We also did, uh, as an aside, you know, w- with Brother Giovanni, they were able to get us into uh, with being law students. We went in, um, to the um, National uh, Forensic Laboratory, which would, it was interesting because it was basically what we would consider our FBI facilities, and they, and they were very gracious and allowed us in, into there and see that. And we saw uh, a, a prison system. Uh, learned about their prison system, and that was given, you know, being mindful that, uh, these were law students that were going on this, on this, uh, mission and making sure we touched base as to understanding the legal system, uh, in Ecuador, which is improving all the time, and, uh, the president, uh, of Ecuador is doing a wonderful job down there to make sure, uh, rights are, are protected, uh, whether that be civil rights, religious rights, everyone is, uh, is being protected down there. See any good ideas? <laughs> Go, uh, well, go borrow. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They they really do. Uh, you know, there are some major changes that they, they did, but a lot of those things uh, we saw some equipment uh, at the forensic laboratories that uh, we would love to have uh, here in the in the Montgomery County Miami Valley area, or maybe in the state. Because I know some of that's uh, that was extremely high tech, and they were very proud of it. Um, that they are moving forward. Um, so they they do have some. Uh, great ideas on education and trying to make sure uh, it's available for everybody. Did uh, was their schools have electric electricity and running water? The the uh, the one school that we went to uh, did not. Uh, that was a, an extremely rural area, um, and that would have been northeast of. Ooh, make sure I get my directions right. Yes, uh, northeast of uh, Quito, uh, up near the cloud forest. That was extremely rural. The other one was in the, would be more due east, maybe slightly southeast of Quito, and that was actually a Marinus school that they actually had built, uh, not only a, uh, an elementary school and a middle school and a high school, so they had electricity. It was a very new school, uh, we were just helping out in, in cleaning some of the area and that, but it was, uh, that was, um, uh, a very new school, uh, in a sense of, uh, building, uh, the buildings were new, uh, and that had, uh, um, you know, electricity had all the amenities that we would see, but again, that was basically in a small town. That would be, you know, kind of a, you know, a, the rural would be something way out in the, in the country, and then maybe, uh, maybe a Brookville or something like that was the size of the town that we were in that had the Marinist, uh, school. Um, uh, but it was, and, and, um, the families and, and as we talked to, uh, the, the head of the school, they always, you know, express to us how important the families know and, and believe that the education system is, and they will, a lot of times, they will do a lot to make sure their children uh, get the best education available, which I think sometimes in our inner cities and in our towns and uh, in our school systems around here, uh, the parents aren't always that that eager there, you know, to make sure the kids are doing everything they need to do in school, and so... That would be one thing that I would encourage, make sure the families do, is see how important education is. 
How would you say this trip affected you? Or what did you like take away that going, I, I thought this way, now I'm going, I'm thinking this way. Well, first, on a, more on a personal <laughs> on a personal basis, in the sense of uh, there were things in the trip, um, specifically with the climb, because uh, we basically we were on a, a very narrow path, and um, it's going st- almost straight up. Sometimes straight up, yes, we were going straight up. You know, and the path maybe was probably a couple, two, three feet wide, and one side's the mountain, and the other side's a, a drop of. Uh, maybe 500 to 1,000 feet, uh, and you had a stick for balance. And uh, the encouraging of what, what I felt, uh, what I thought was, was amazing is as we went up, um, a number of the students were uh, apprehend, apprehensive and just just were, you know, questioning whether or not we should continue and uh, as a building uh, thing. And I think that's the, the thing that Brother Giovanni talked about uh is that uh, we all had good faith in each, not, not not only in each other, but we had faith in uh, our guide to make sure that we were uh, going to make it. And uh, the encouragement that you saw from each student to the other student to student to uh, <laughs> to myself to keep on going, even though I we would ask for breaks and all that, and we would take them. But we, uh, you know, g- going up that height. Uh, it, you know, when we when we made it, when every one of us made it, uh, I think the seeing the students and uh, even uh, Judge Huffman and, and myself, uh, uh, the accomplishment that that we were able to do it and uh, we persevered. Uh, that was a challenge, and I think a lot of us, if you when we came back down and you look back up, that we actually did it. We were, uh, uh, you know, uh, quite proud of ourselves that we accomplished that. And I and I think, the, but the overall thing, uh, it was how Brother Giovanni made sure that uh, he continued to encourage us to think about not only you know us learning and, and understanding the culture of Ecuador, but to be mindful to always remember that and remember the people that we met and how they will affect us and we can affect them and bring them up. And bring those children up, even if it's to send up one ream of paper. And that's kind of what we talked about is how much paper in my law office do we, um, just throw away? And how much paper at the state house do we just throw away when we could, uh, when that could be used for such good down there? And I think that, I think that really affected the students. I know that it affected me. Now we're, I'm a little bit more cautious when there's a, Paper jam in the copier. Uh, we're not just ripping out three pages. Well, maybe let's save the other two and work on saving that one as scrap because I know how important that is to uh, an educational system down in Ecuador that that, that that would mean something. And if we can save, if every company could save, you know, every person save one ream of paper and we take that finance and send it down there, uh, that will do a tremendous amount for uh, that, that, that rural school for that country and, and for those individual families. So we've been talking for quite a while now. Is there anything that you wanted to bring up in this interview that I have not thought to ask you? Uh, no, and again, if, if people are, uh, need anything or need any help from me or have any additional questions, uh, whether it, not only it doesn't even have to be in our district about the Miami Valley or the state of Ohio, they can always reach out to me on uh, either the email address or contact me at the state house or my uh, legislative aide, Kevin, up at the state house. Um, and just look it up online. They'll give you the connections and all that. But if there's anything that you need, not only call me, but if, if, if I'm not your state rep, make sure you call your state rep because we can really uh, help solve a lot of problems. All right, sir. Well, thank you again for being on the show. Thank you for having me, and I, you know, and, and, and I thank you for your guidance all the time. This is Reverend Thomas Wise, and the show is called Politically Wise. The show is titled Politically Wise, and I am your host, Reverend Thomas Wise. Thank you for listening today. If you want to email me, you may do so at politically.wise at gmail.com. Please like us on our Facebook page, Politically Wise. Now, here is your blessing. Blessings based on Psalms chapter 22, verses 20 through 31. Do you fear the Lord? Do you praise Him? God has not hidden His face from you. God does listen to your cries. God loves it when you fulfill your vows. 
Seek the Lord and praise Him. Remember the Lord and bow down to Him. Proclaim the Lord's righteousness every day.